a message I've entitled The Master Key of Prayer. The Master Key of Prayer. And if you look in your Bibles at John chapter 15, I want to read for you verses 7 through 10. And I'll ask you tonight, if you will, if you'll stand just in honor and reverence to the reading of his holy and errant, infallible word. In John chapter 15, verse 7, if you found your place, if you found it, say amen. 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 A lot of you found it. That's good. The Bible tells us in Jesus here as he's given the uh, as he's given the parable of the vine, the true vine, he says in verse 7, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. Father, we'll ask you now, Lord, to bless your word. Father, I am dependent upon your spirit. I'm dependent upon you. Lord, for without you, I can do nothing. Holy Spirit of God, we pray that you just, Lord, help us to have light, Lord, concerning these words. And Father, may we grow up into Jesus Christ. Lord, may our hearts, Lord, just be one with you. Lord, join us to you is our prayer. Father, may our understanding open, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And you can be seated. Now, I don't know of a time in history that we really could use a closer walk with God than we do right now because we are in uncertain times. There are just so many things that goes wrong and the, on the, the news we see things that's, uh, that takes place and sometimes it just just bewildered us what we see take place. And you know, the Lord knew that hard times lay ahead for his people. He realized that because see, Jesus being creator, he knew what was in the heart of man and he knew what happened to mankind when man decided through Adam, he decided that I'm gonna have it my way and I'm not gonna live by God's way, I'm gonna do it my way. See, Adam made a conscious decision that I'm gonna disobey God. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go against what he said do. See, God told him, don't partake of the knowledge of good and evil. But Adam decided, well, I'm going to anyway. We well, see, man, because man has this knowledge of good and evil, and it's, there's something that draws man into the evil side because we have that knowledge. We know good, but then we know evil also. And so there's something that mankind has just drawn away. If you notice all the wickedness you see on, it seems like that television can't get too wicked. It seems like that the further it goes, the people's got to display a little, something a little more wicked next time in order for it to, to be exciting or whatever. And it's almost, a, it's just difficult to watch all that stuff unfold. It's almost like you just wanna turn the thing off and just do something else because there's nothing there that you're, you're attracted to, anything there that would, would just, it just turns your stomach almost. And you know, if there's anything that the Lord Jesus would like to see his church doing today, the Lord Jesus wants his people living a victorious life in him. And I, I really believe with all my heart that if God's people could really understand scripture and have a willing heart to be obedient to God and walk in him as, as, as he gives us light in scripture, that God would do great and mighty things. And I, tonight, as we think about the master key of prayer, I want us to, there's, there's, there's something in my heart and something in my mind that I want us to see. Now, whether I can bring it out or not, I don't know. You'll have to make that decision. But I want us to understand that prayer is your avenue to having and reaching the heart of God and having the things that you need and the things that God wants you to have. And your connection to God is through prayer. And there's times when we use prayer as just like, it's kind of like a, a religious work that we've done that we think it's such a blessing to pray. And, and, and really and truly it is a blessing to pray, but prayer is much more than just saying words to God. And, and there's something in prayer that we need to really discern and we need to really find out. And I'll tell you what really makes you glad in your spirit is when you pray those prayers you begin to see God immediately answer those prayers 
in a mighty way that you realize that God answered that prayer. You talk about giving you a feeling of confidence and a, and a feeling that, that man, I, God just moved in my behalf. And you say, whoo, hallelujah. Lord, you, see, that should be an everyday experience. That's what I'm saying, church. Why are we not experiencing on a everyday basis? Why do we have to linger with our prayers being unanswered? I believe the key right here tonight will help us come to some understanding or some better degree of that. Now, I hope I don't offend anybody tonight because it's not my purpose in my heart to offend you. It's not my purpose in my heart to make you think that you're less a Christian than what you ought to be. No, my purpose is to help us grow up into Jesus. I need to grow into Jesus. You need to grow into Jesus. That growth process will be a lifelong growing. We'll never get as full in him as we need to be. We'll always need to grow into Jesus. So if you hear me say things tonight that don't agree with you, then you say, well, he's trying to help me. He's really not making, he's not putting me down. He's not trying to push me down. He's trying to help me and he's trying to build me up. But I'm telling you, whenever you get answers to prayers, there's something clicks in your heart. I'm gonna share one with you, and it involves Brother Eric. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what was happening. Uh, it was one of the days that I was fasting and uh, about revival and, and all that, and I was just so concerned about the direction of the church and what we need to do, and uh, I had been praying, I asked God, Lord, you show us where we can work. You show us what we need to do. You show us an unreached people group. And by the way, that unreached people group has not been met yet, but I know that the Lord will lead us there. But I'll, I'll just show you how th that God works. And I had, uh, well, we get a lot of junk mail at the church. So I was looking through the mail and thumbing through, and here was a, we get a lot of petitions for people wanting this and wanting that. And so I picked up the letter, and here was another letter. And I looked at it and I started to throw it away and I said, no, I'm, I'm, let me look at this. So I looked at it and it was Eric, Eric Bowman and his wife and I thought they're missionaries. And I said, well, somebody else wants money. And so I, I look at it and something just clicked in me. Read the letter. And I read the letter and they told me they had a heart for it. And I looked at the picture, didn't recognize them. And like that, so I'll find out if this person's on the level or not. So I called him on the phone. I had his phone number there, he answered the phone. He began to talk to me just like he knew me. And I thought, well, that's kind of kind of strange. I didn't, re and see, it didn't take him long that he figured out, I didn't realize, he didn't, that, that I didn't know who I was talking to. See, because Eric was a former student of mine at Hatfield High School. And I went to, went to church with him up at Hunter First Baptist Church a few years ago. I think that's where Tammy and Eric met and, and all that. But see, I didn't realize that's who I was talking to. And the fact that I had called Eric that day spoke to Eric's heart. Now Eric told me that the very phone call that I gave him encouraged him beyond measure because he was weak, he was down and out, and he was just about, I don't know, not, not the point of quitting or giving up, but he was just discouraged and needed encouraging. And he said the phone call encouraged him. And I thought, my goodness, Lord, that's how you work. That's exactly how you work. I thought of Ananias whenever uh, the Lord told Ananias to go down and help Saul because he had gone, he had went blind and go down and pray for him. And Ananias said, no, I'm, that, is that the man that persecutes the church? The Lord said, go pray for him. He went and prayed for him and delivered him. And I'm just seeing the Holy Ghost God, power of God working in that sense in that way. And I'm telling you, our prayers can be answered. There's, and if our prayers are not being answered, we need to be doing something about it because the Bible is clear. God will answer our prayers and if our prayers are not being answered, then something is wrong. And I, I, I want us to understand here tonight that we, there's, some, there's some things that can help us. And as we look at this idea, the master key of prayer, I want you to, I want you to know that there's something here and my purpose, I'd like to help unlock the mystery of prayer for you and me. There's, there's four things I want to con consider as just a, as a result of abiding in Christ. Now, that term abiding in Christ really is the key to everything. But I wonder, do we really go into the depths of what abiding in Christ really is? Now, I'm thinking about if I'm, if I'm abiding someplace, it's like that that's where I live. 
That's where I'm comfortable. That's where I feel secure. That's where I feel safe. That's where I'm going to stay if I'm abiding there. Christ said abide in him. Christ didn't say try to figure it out. He didn't say worry over it. He didn't say those things. He said abide in me. You, in other words, you live in me. Did he not, didn't the apostle Paul say in Christ is where we live and move and have our being in him? So the abiding in Christ is, 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 is critical. Now look what, look what Jesus says in verse seven. He says, if you abide in me, notice the word if, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, notice what he says, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Now very carefully I want you to notice these words. Jesus was saying here in this parable of the, the true vine, he's saying that without me you can do nothing. He's trying to get the apostles here, his disciples, before he goes to the cross, he wants to understand the, 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 the way that the Christian life is and, and what he's wanting to do. And you'll realize too, that even though he's talking to them, this word can be transferred to us also because just a little while later is when Jesus prays that prayer that was recorded in John 17. And he, he prayed not only for those disciples, but for all who would believe on him through the testimony of those disciples. And it's kind of retroactive. It just keeps on coming. It just keeps on coming down through the ages, through generations. So that's why we can take these scriptures and apply them to ourselves. It's important that we have and realize answers to our prayers. Now, he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, Notice what he says, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Now, there is a way that mankind, modern man has figured something out. Let me show you what modern man has figured out. They figured out a way that they can save face and live with their unanswered prayers and still not embarrass God at the same time. Do you think the man would be smart enough to do that, figure it out how to do that? How could man figure out a way to tell God, well, it's okay, and I'm okay with it, and there's a way to justify my unanswered prayers. Here it is. Lord, if it be your will. Now, I told you, I didn't want to, I don't want to offend nobody. I'm not, that's not my heart. I'm not here to offend you. But here's what we do. The Lord wants us to tell him what we want. I've searched in the scripture and I've looked and I've hunted. Lord, where do you tell us to pray and all that? Now, now we are told to pray according to his will and I want you to turn, I want you to turn there with me, if you will. I want you to turn to 1 John chapter five. We're gonna look at verse 14 and 15. He says, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now that's probably where we get that term. Lord, if it's your will, we can do this. Lord, will you heal my cancer if it's your will? Well, why wouldn't it be God's will? God wants us to know what we want. Now let's read verse, let's read verse 15. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we desire of him. So he's really not saying to give yourself an alibi. Here's what he's saying. He's saying, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, I'll give you what you ask me. Because what you're gonna be asking for is gonna be within the will of God if you are abiding in him and he's abiding in you. See, the problem is sometimes that we might not be abiding in Christ the way we should be abiding in Christ. We try to do our little religious motions. Now remember, Satan is a deceiver and he's out to deceive the church or anybody that'll listen to him. And we make excuses sometimes because we really are not willing to consecrate ourselves and dedicate ourselves close enough to God where we can get a steady flow of answered prayers. Because see, that's why we need to learn how to pray and what to pray for. We need to pray in the will of God. Because you're not going to get prayers answered for you that's outside of God's will. You will not. You can pray for a, whatever you pray for. If it's not in God's will, you're not going to get it. Because God does not hear that prayer. 
God is not a jack in the box. He's not a genie that you rub on the head and he'll jump up and do whatever you want to do. That's not what the scripture says. But here's, here's what he did. Here's, here's what, he, what he does tell us. He is going to do as the Lord Jesus, now hear me, he's going to do what the Lord Jesus asked him to do because he loves the son. That's critical. You've got to understand that. He loves the son of God. Now the son of God is the one that he created the world by and who made the sacrifice for my sin and your sin for the whole sin of the world. And he is so pleased with him. And so here's what Jesus said. If you want to get your, your, your prayers answered, now this is Jesus talking in verse seven, abide in me. And then let my words abide in you. Then you're going to get your prayers answered. Because God is going to do as you pray as Jesus, as you pray as the Son of God, as you pray as a daughter of God. Are we not members of the body of Christ? Are we not members one all together? Are we not one in Him? So therefore we see our prayers are dependent upon our abiding in Him. You see, he says that if you ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, are there a lot of prayers that we pray that are not answered? I have prayers I've been praying for a long time I've not seen an answer to. But don't you think for one minute I'm not trying to discover why. I've got children that I've, I'm asking God, that, Lord, I want to see them in church. I want to see them living under, under the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to see them giving glory to God. And as I, as I analyze my praying and as I analyze, I can see no reason why that is not within the will of God and I cannot understand why that it's not already happened, but it's going to happen. Because here's why. Because my desire is to abide in Him and let His words abide in me and He has said He's going to answer my prayer because that I'm praying in the will of God. And God hears our prayers. I'm telling you, church, that the Lord Jesus is, is the one who, who takes the prayers of the saints and operates in this earth according to your prayers. Your prayers, can, no wonder Jesus said, if you've got the faith of the grain of mustard seeds, you can move mountain, you can say that mountain be gone. I'm telling you, it's, it's within the realm of the people of God when we understand it's not about me, it's about Jesus. And my prayers will be answered in him when I'm praying in Christ Jesus. And when our prayers are going, see, too many times we let flesh rule us and we try to pray prayers that's based upon what my materialistic need is. I, how much time do we spend praying for materialistic things? How much time and energy do we spend praying for things that's really not going to cause the church of God to grow stronger? It's not going to cause the church of God to increase. It's not, we're not praying about lost souls. We're not praying about sending missionaries to un, unreached people groups around the world. We're praying about things that cause us to be happier, to cause us to be more comfortable. Those kind of prayers are not within the realm of abiding in me and my words abiding in you. So therefore, those prayers goes unheard, basically. They, they, unless, it's a, unless it's a desperate need that we need. So you see, abiding in Jesus Christ is the master key of prayer. Now there's times that some prayers require self-denial. We know of Jesus told them when they couldn't cast the demon out, said this kind goes out not except by prayer and by fasting. Some, it takes more consecration for certain things. And Jesus said in Matthew 21 and 22, he said, all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. And everywhere you look, Jesus is saying, there will be answer to your prayer and you will receive those. And my question and my, my, what I'm seeing is that if my prayers are not being answered, then there's something, either one or two things is happening. I'm not living up to my end or God is not living up to his end. Are you with me? If you're with me, say amen. 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 Now, is God going to renege on his word? No. Must not be. Let me, because he is a true God. So that means one thing. That means that, that I must be not where I need to be in my ability to reach God and understanding how to pray. 
and in my understanding and how I need to base my prayer and the fervency of my prayer and the heart of my prayer. There's a, there's a, there's a fervent prayer. The Bible says the, the fervent prayer of a righteous man in, in James chapter five said accomplishes much. And you see this abiding. See, I'm not gonna receive anything from God unless it's in the, con in, the, in, in, the, in the concept of me being in Christ Jesus. Because see, I'm praying as the body of Christ. I'm praying as one of the members of his body because we're all one. The church, all around the world, the whole worldwide church of God, everyone who's born by the spirit of God is that church of God eternal, that church of God glorious. And that's the ones who are abiding in Jesus Christ. That's the ones who get their prayers answered. And denomination, I, I'm telling you, denomination, that's man has made denomination. God has not made denomination. And I know some are better than others, and I realize that, and all that kind of stuff. But let me tell you, we have to really understand that it's in Christ Jesus, and my abiding in Him is what's going to be the very key to my prayers being answered. And I look back on my life, I can see prayers I've prayed that I really didn't notice the answer. And then, thinking back, man, there's a prayer God answered and he didn't just answer it for a few days, he answers it for a lifetime. That's something that's so interesting to me about God. So interesting to me about God. I've shared this with you before, I'm gonna share it again. I, I was just a little old young teenage boy needing a job and was working in a job, my hands cold, freezing, and. I asked God one day, standing down here in these old plants that are working on an old nasty maintenance crew and the cold wind blowing into the windows I was trying to patch up for them. And I asked God for a good job. I said, Lord, give me something to do. Lord, I need a job. And, something to let, you know. and here's what happened. Within two weeks' time, I got an offer to go into the pipe shop down here at the uh, North American Rayon plant. It just so happened that the pipe shop foreman was a nighttime instructor over to vocational school in John City teaching welding. I had a good interest in welding. He invited me to come and join the class. It wasn't just a few months I had certified and I went to work as a welder. First thing you know, I was going all over the country of welding. Ended up down in South Carolina. Ended up getting invited to be a school teacher down there and come back and didn't know what God was doing and he sent me in Happy Valley High School for 33 years sharing the gospel with the kids straightened my life out, gave me a good retirement, and I look back and I say, Lord, that's the answer to that prayer I prayed back there as a young man. Amen. You can't outdo God. Amen. Son, when he, when he answers prayer, he answers it, he fixes it. He don't just patch it up, he fixes it for a long time. I'm telling you, God hears our prayers. And it's the abiding in him is where we get the answer to him. And when you pray, you get results for your prayers. Because you might just be praying for me. And if you are, pray good things for me. I've heard them saying, if you want a better preacher, pray for the one you got. I'll take your prayers as long as you're praying like that for me. <laughs> Listen, we need to abide in Jesus Christ because there's benefit in him. We don't need to worry. We don't need to trouble ourselves with it. No, when that confusion, that trouble comes, we just need to say, Lord, I'm abiding in you. Remember this thought. There is a place in God to where there's comfort because I'm safe in my abiding place, in my abode. And I think so often back over in Revelation where the Lord said, and the dwelling place of God is with man. Boy, that, that has sunk deep into my spirit. And that makes me know that, Lord, I don't understand how you did it. I don't know how that took place. But I, I don't, Lord, I really don't understand how you did that. But some way, you interjected yourself into my spirit. Oh, hallelujah. And now I'm so full of you, I can't help myself. I can't be the old man I used to be no more. Because now, Lord, I'm full of you. And it's your spirit now that causes me to do the thing to do. It's your spirit now that makes me want to love people. It's your spirit now that makes me want to behave myself. It's you that's directing me. No longer I, but Christ that lives in me now. See, it's a transition of spiritual things that's beyond the comprehension of mankind. But it only happens when the abiding in him, 
when you want to abide in him more than you want life itself. It's not a casual, maybe so. It's not a casual, oh, I'll do it if I feel like it. No, it's beyond that. It's the level where I will do whatever the Lord Jesus, through the mighty power of the Holy Spirit, asks me to do. Stepping out in faith. Lord, I'll go do what you ask me to do. <laughs> it's abiding in him. <laughs> There's such peace and such joy knowing that if this earth began to split and shake and melt away right now, I'm still safe anyway. <laughs> but I'm anchored deep in the rock of ages. No harm can come. Nothing can touch us. Why? Because I am safe in the arms of Jesus. I'm just, I'm just eternally secure in him. You say, how does that happen? It's called abide in him. And let him grow us up into the head which is Christ because that's what he's wanting to do. He wants us to come to that level of understanding to where there's peace, constant peace. Look what happens when we abide. There's some fruitfulness. Look in verse eight. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Did you know the Lord is interested in your actions because your, the way you, what you do is your actions and God is interested in the fruit that you produce. He really is. He says, herein is my Father glorified. How, how is he glorified? Verse seven, excuse me, verse eight of chapter 15 of John. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Now then, notice this. He says, so, so shall you be my disciples. Now I'm asking, this is just, just for me. Does this mean Jesus is saying that my disciples are going to abide in me and they are going to be fruit bearers? That's kind, of, that's kind of what it sounds like to me. It sounds like that really, there's, I don't have an option. It's either I'm abiding and I'm fruit bearing. And the Bible teaches in the parable some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And what level you're producing is up to God. But we do see fruit bearing in the disciples. And if you're a disciple of God, there's fruit bearing in your life. And it results from abiding in Jesus. And so the more secure you are in abiding, the more secure you are in producing the fruit. See, I told you a while ago that we had a glorious opportunity to glorify the Father. To walk on this earth Look at this beauty around us that God's created. We're getting ready to go into the autumn season. Look at the beautiful trees and, and all the, the beautiful change of the seasons and all that that God does every, just on a timely fashion, year after year. And you'll think, man, what a glory that does to God. Well, here's what a glory does to God. Also, God gets glory when you're bearing fruit. When you are a fruit-bearing Christian, how do you bear fruit? In what way? In what way do I bear fruit? He says, in Philippians 1.11, Paul says, being filled with the fruits of righteousness. Well, righteousness is doing right. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. So you see, there is a fruit, there's a fruit of just doing what's right. And then look at verse nine. Here's love. If you're abiding in Christ, you can't help but have love. Look at verse nine here in chapter 15. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now, notice carefully. He says, continue ye in my love. There's a difference. He didn't say your love. He said my love. And so how can you love like Jesus unless you're abiding? If you're not abiding, you're not gonna love like Jesus. Some people have a hard time saying, well, I can't love like Jesus loved. Well, you need to abide in Jesus and let, let the love that the Spirit of God produces in you flow through you. Now remember, did not God, did, did not Jesus say over there in Matthew chapter five that, it, that God lets it rain on the just and the unjust, on, on, the, on, the, on the just and on the wicked, God lets it rain. He lets the sun rise on the just and the unjust, just the same showing the love of God. 
And he, just a verse or two later, he said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect, even as the Father in heaven is perfect. How can you be that way? You can never be that way without continuing in the love of Jesus, continuing in Jesus' love. See, that, lets, that takes all the pressure off of me. Now remember, what am I doing? I'm bearing fruit now, what am I doing? I'm loving now, and I'm doing it with, this is beyond my capability. It's no longer I that lives, but Christ lives in me. Why? Because it happens because I am abiding in him. So you see the master key there is the abiding. You can see, and it bears out in this passage right here, that's where we, get the, that's where we understand the fruit bearing because the disciples are gonna bear fruit. And if you're not producing fruit that you can visibly see, you need to check your body, see what's going on in your life. Make sure that there's something taking place in your life that you categorize, well, there's fruit for God. That, that is glory to God. This is, this is glory to Him. And God will show you the things. And then there's finally, I want you to notice this in verse 10. I want you to notice obedience. Look at verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. So how did Jesus maintain while He was here on earth in the human form, how did He maintain His abiding? He did it by keeping the commandments of His Father. Jesus said early in His life, I, I, I am to do my Father's will. When they come looking for Him, when His mama come looking for Him at age 12, said, don't you know I gotta be about my Father's business? At age 12, Jesus already made up his mind, I'm gonna obey God. And it would behoove us to make that same decision. I'm gonna be obedient to the word of God. I'm gonna do the commands of God. I may not understand every command, but I'm gonna try my best to understand. I'm gonna ask God for direction, for clarity, and I'm gonna obey, I'm gonna obey these commands. Matthew 7, 21, I want you to listen to this carefully. The Lord said there in the Sermon on the Mount, the latter part of the Sermon on the Mount, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. They're the ones, the ones that does the will of the Father in heaven. Well, here's what I can tell you the will of the Father is. The will of the Father is this, that you trust Jesus, you, you let Jesus be Lord of your life, and you surrender your life totally into Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And you, you are transformed into the image of Christ Jesus according to Romans 29. Romans 8, 29. 8, 28 says, all things work together to good, those that love the Lord, who are they called according to his purpose. Everybody knows that verse because it sounds good. But then they don't understand it when it comes to verse 29, that we are predestined to be conformed. God meant for us to be conformed into the image of Jesus. That's why Paul said that when we come into Jesus, we are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Behold, old things pass away, all things become new. And that's what happens in the life of a true believer. That is abiding in Jesus Christ and abiding completely in Him. Abiding in Jesus will result in answered prayer, in fruitfulness, in love, and obedience. That's what abiding in Jesus will produce. And I tell you what, if we've got a church full of people who are truly abiding, here's what we're gonna see. We're gonna see the mighty Spirit of God working in the midst of the body and it's untelling what God would do with a body of believers completely sold out to Him. It is just untelling what God would be able to do. One thing he will do, he'll draw lost people to himself. And my prayer is that we understand this principle that unlocks that master key that unlocks prayer. See, the very reason why some of our prayers may not be answered is because we don't understand how we're praying. We, we're praying amiss. We're, we're praying in ways we shouldn't pray. We're asking for things that God's not put under the, under the banner of what we can get answered. See, he only answers prayers that are prayed according, according to his will. Now, one other thing before we go. I, I want to I uh, quote this verse for you. When Joab was trying to get Aslam to 
come back into Jerusalem. See, Aslam had a conspiracy against David, and Ad, Aslam, uh, he, he was real popular, and he was real pretty, and uh, David's son, and was trying to raise up a kingdom against David. Well, he left, and then Joab kind of went with, with, with Aslam, and as he came back, Joab had a lady to go before King David and ask him certain things, and David kind of sensed what was going on. Asked the lady, he said, did Joab send you here to tell me all this? Is that why you're here? And that lady realized that the king done smelled her out. And she said, yeah, Joab put these words in my heart. So this was really from Joab. And so David, David said to Joab, as the Bible says in 2 Samuel 14, 22, and when Joab said, Joab fell on the ground on his face and bowed himself and thanked the king. And Joab said, now here's what Joab's word to King David was, today thy servant knoweth that I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, my king, in that the king has fulfilled the request of his servant. Now what does that tell us? That tells us that if you want to know that you're in the favor of God, you look for answer for your prayers. When God, when, when, when you're pleasing to God, God's going to answer your prayers or else, or else he did not tell the truth in the Bible. I, I can say it like that. It's either, either you miss it or God miss it. Either I miss it or God misses it. Now, it's, you make up your mind which one it's going to be. But there, I believe sometimes that there's things that we can be praying for that God would move for if we would just simply ask God. Amen. Blind Barnabas come to the Lord. Blind as he could be. He cried out, O oh, son of David, O oh, son of David. And the Lord saw him blind. The Lord knew he was blind. You know what Jesus said to him? What would you have me do for you? Why would the Lord, the Lord already saw what he is blind. Why would the Lord ask? Because God wants us to ask him, Lord, what do you, what is your will? See, see, he made us free moral agents, free moral creatures. We can ask, and God wants us to ask what we want. We don't want him to try to figure all of our life out for, he wants us to figure it out. You ask me, what do you want? See, sometimes when you go before God, you need to know that you've got the privilege of asking God what you want. Some of us don't have the confidence in our prayers, our confidence in our relationship to Jesus to say, Lord, I need more of your power. Lord, I need more of your presence in my life. Lord, my neighbor over here needs to be saved. Would you give me boldness to go witness that person? See, the confidence in him is what we need because he's gonna hear and answer our prayers. He's gonna hear and answer our prayers. And my prayer tonight and my sincere, my sincere desire is that there's such a, there's such a openness and such a clarity in these passages and what Jesus was teaching the disciples right there at the end of his life, what he wants us to see. And I think somehow or another, in the way we do religious stuff, somehow or another, we have just kind of went around and not really paid attention to what God has really, what he's really after. And he wants us to see that you and I are members of his body in particular. And we need to understand clearly that we are part of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're his body. We're his visible body here on this earth. And if he's going to do any work here, he'll do it through you and through me. And that's what we need to understand. And my prayer for us is that we get a grip on abiding in him. That our prayer is, I pray this week, while that you're going about your work, you come in here, we worship, we praise God, we sing, and have a glorious time in him. But your, your missionary field is out there in the work world. And so I pray you go out there and understand that you're abiding in Jesus. And Jesus hears your prayers. And he will answer your prayers. And he'll move in your behalf. If you've got the confidence in him to ask him and to depend on him. If you will, stand with me.